time for Around the Ozarks in 5. Brought to you by the Butterfly Palace and Rainforest Adventure, Adventure Cave Tours, and Talking Rocks Cavern. Here are your hosts, Ethan and Sarah Foreheads. Yep, that's us. Good morning to you on Thursday. Hope you're having a great week, and let's get uh, started with news. All right, lots of questions and not many answers in the case of a missing doctor from Cassville, and the search continues. Dr. John Forsyth was reported missing Sunday night after not showing up for his shift at Mercy Hospital in Cassville, uh, something that for him is very odd. And since then, dozens of law enforcement agencies, about 13 agencies, in fact, have been searching 90 acres near where his car was found in a park. Very unusual, isn't it? Yeah, that's a sad story. I hope hope they figure something out because it's, yeah. it's very, very unlike him. Uh, uh, you know, he just doesn't disappear like that. So. Um, all right. Now, this story, Johnny Morris is apparently expanding his golf portfolio in Branson. Uh, I saw this in the Springfield News Leader. thought it was interesting. Uh, he's building a new par three course at Payne's Valley, which, of course, uh, is the public golf course that was designed by Tiger Woods, which is cool. Uh, this one is named after Payne Stewart or that one, I should say, is named after Payne Stewart, the Springfield native, of course, who won three major championships before he was killed in a plane accident in 1999 at the age of 42. Uh, no word yet on when the new course may be finished. Yeah, it's really, uh, he's really, Johnny's really making Branson a golf destination. So this will be another another one uh, that will be the second par three up there that he's built because obviously top of the rock is a par three. Uh, so it's exciting to see. I mean, I bet the, the timeline's probably <laughs> 10 years or something because yeah. you know how those go. I mean, it's going to be perfect when it opens, but it, it could be a while. Yeah, man, it is. We were at big Cedar recently and yeah. seriously, it's just immaculate. I mean, honestly, you feel like you're on vacation far, far away from home. Really. Yeah. And we were, we were there, uh, and got to talk to some people who were from in from out of town for the first time. And they were like blown, blown away. away. Is, is, is all of Missouri like this? No, all of Missouri is yeah. not like big C. We actually told them that they were in the best spot. In fact, in the entire state. Yeah. So they didn't I need to go anywhere true. else in the state. They've seen it all. Yep. Uh, new numbers are out from the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, and they show that wages were down uh, in the fourth quarter of last year in Greene County. Uh, so just we're just now getting numbers from the end of uh, last year. But they weren't good. They were down 1.2% compared to fourth quarter of 2021. Uh, and today is groundbreaking on a brand new fire station down in Branson. It will be the fourth fire station in Branson. It has a price tag of about $5 million. It's being paid for by a half cent sales tax that voters approved back in 2017. All right. It is now uh, political season, as you know, in the run up to the 2024 presidential race. Uh, Florida Governor Ron DeSantis entered the race officially yesterday, as expected. Uh, former President Trump, of course, announced his run back in November of last year. Also, the Missouri Attorney General, Andrew Bailey, is announcing his endorsement of Trump in the race. He said America needs to put a fighter who puts America first back into the White House. Okay. Yep. It's uh, starting to heat up a little bit. Yeah. I saw on Twitter everybody talking about Ron DeSantis saying he was announcing his candidacy and it was a disaster on Twitter. And I didn't, I'm not doing it. I'm not clicking into it. What makes it a, what made it a disaster? I don't know, but it's just funny how all of the notifications started popping up. So, <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I didn't, I didn't watch it. I don't need to watch it. I can, I can figure it out and get the highlights, but yeah, uh, you can't trust anything on Twitter. <laughs> I know. I, th that's, I was like, no, nope, it's not all, do it. I mean, it, it's all opinion. It's all opinion. So, right. Um, all right, a $10 million development is on the way to Fremont Street at Erie Street, just south of Battlefield Road. It'll be called Fountain Place. So maybe there'll be lots of fountains. That would be cool. Uh, okay. One of the big tenants will be Avanzari, uh, which is an Italian restaurant, of course. Right now they have one location in the Plaza Shopping Center, and we don't know if this location is going to take the place of that one or if it will be a second one. Hmm. 
Okay. Yeah, that's going to be a fairly big development, uh, it looks like. And it's it's down there right by where that big new apartment building is going. It's going to be, I don't know, a six six story, five or six story apartment building. It looks like right there uh, across the street, basically from, well, it's down from the mall, but it's across the street from uh, uh, one of the banks. And in that little strip mall, I forget what the strip mall is called, uh, where they have an Andy's in there. Uh, but it's, it, oh, where the, uh, the Heritage Cafeteria? Heritage Cafeteria. I couldn't think of the name of it. It's it's replacing that that apartment building is replacing Heritage Cafeteria. Yes. Let me help you. Heritage Cafeteria. The rest of the Ozarks knows it. Well, they I know. All... I can remember the name. Yeah. There you yeah. go. But anyway, that's going to be a big, big development. This is just a block away from that to the south on Fremont. Okay. All right. Now that everybody knows. Uh, TikTok <laughs> is now, I think I cleared that up. TikTok is now suing uh, the state of Montana over its first in the country ban on the controversial Chinese app. Uh, TikTok argues the right to free speech is being infringed. The state contends it's a way to protect its citizens from Chinese spying through the app. Of course, you know, the FBI and politicians on both sides of the aisle have warned about the potential for TikTok to spy on American citizens and all the information they're collecting and how it uh, very likely is not being put to good use, at least from our perspective. Uh, and then there's this. We've been waiting for it to happen. Uh, it looks like Netflix is cracking down on password sharing in the United States. It says more than 100 million households share accounts. No doubt many of you <laughs> And maybe us. Uh, and next, Netflix wants to get paid for that. So the streaming service will allow customers to pay an extra $8 per account for every household outside the original household that is using that account, right? So if you're if you're horning in on somebody else's and sharing with somebody else's, you may have to pay an extra $8 a month to be able to, to uh, use their account. Still cheaper than having an account yourself, but not, not by much, I don't think. Uh, no word on when they start blocking accounts for those who don't pay up, uh, but it's coming. All right. Um, a big event happening in Springfield this weekend. Starting tomorrow, it is the NSRA Mid-America Street Rod Nationals at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds. Spectators are welcome from 8 to 5, both tomorrow, Friday, uh, and on Saturday. Uh, and then on Sunday, you're welcome. Sunday, to come Sunday, from Sunday. Sorry. From 8 to 12.30. I think they're going to give you the job. Are you going for a voicing <laughs> job? You got it. Been doing it since I was a kid. Um, it is a premier gathering, apparently, of the classic and custom cars. More than 1,500 cars, street rods, muscle cars, classic cars from all over the country will be at the Ozark Empire Fairgrounds this weekend. Yeah, I know it's a big deal for a lot of people. They love those cars, the street rods and hot rods and classic cars. They, they just love cars. So they spend the weekend walking around, looking at cars, talking yep. about cars. Yeah. What kind of engine you got in that thing? Yeah, that's funny. Um, okay, this is by far the most interesting story that you will hear this week, possibly this month. That's a big claim, right? There's a lot of crazy stuff that happens. Hit but us with this it. is it. Let's is everybody it. paying attention? Is everybody listening? All right. Are you ready for this? People are calling and coming in droves to a small town in Missouri called Gower, which is straight north of Kansas City, uh, before you hit St. Joe, to see a nun's body who has been buried for four years. But apparently her body is still completely intact. Her sisters um, decided to exhume her body, essentially. Sister Wilhelmina Lancaster was known for her devotion to the traditional Latin mass and her faithfulness to the Benedictine contemplation and the liturgy of the hours. So her sister nuns decided to dig up her remains and place them under an altar in the chapel there at the Benedictine monastery. Uh, but instead of finding her bones in the casket, which is what they were anticipating, they said that her body is still 100% fine. I saw a picture of it. You did? You saw a picture yeah. of it? Yeah. I didn't see a picture of it. She's she's on display and people could touch her. I know, but I didn't see the picture. Yeah. 
I didn't see the picture. Okay. Anyway, so this is being called a miracle in Missouri. Her body will be displayed from now um, until May 29th at the Benedictine Monastery. And then they will have a rosary procession. And then after that, her body will actually be encased in a glass enclosure in the chapel. That's, that's crazy. <laughs> and to make it what? more more crazy is, is that it was she's basically uh, buried just in a box, a pine box with, that had a crack in the top of it. So water had gotten in and there was no decomposition. It's very, very strange. I don't know. And I don't know what to make years. of it physically. I don't know what to make of it spiritually. I certainly don't know what to make about it emotionally. I don't know. I don't know about this. Like going to see this person. Um, I yeah, mean, yeah. you know, uh, Four years Mother later. Teresa in her own right, um, I think is safe to say for this population because clearly they're, they were exhuming her body, right? So, um, I'm all kinds of messed up with this story, but it was too interesting not to let the good people of the Ozarks know about it. Yeah, it's it's very, very strange. I mean, the decomposition that would normally happen after four years when it, you're not even in an airtight vault mm -mm. Uh, is yeah. pretty extreme. And for her to have none of it, something's going on. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what. I there don't know what. Right. But something's going on. So, yes, I mean, I don't know. I don't know what they're going to eventually do, with, like the Catholic Church is going to do. Uh, she she won't be probably uh, saint sainted. I, I don't think it becomes that. But I don't know. They got to do something because that's, that a, I don't even know what that is exactly. It's but, crazy. Yeah. Um, OK, well, I hope they're keeping good records because I'd like to see uh, they probably weren't shooting any video or anything early on like as they're exhuming her, but a documentary on that a year from now would be yeah. super interesting. Yeah. Very, very interesting indeed. It's a, yeah. it's a way to put it. Yeah. Um, all right. Before we go, I wanted to let you know a reminder about the contest right now to win yep. four free tickets to Talking Rocks Cavern uh, from one of the sponsors of our show. Thank you for your sponsorship, Talking Rocks Cavern and Adventure Cave Tours, Butterfly Palace, and Rainforest Adventure. So uh, we hope that you will register. Do that right now at aroundtheozarks.com. Um, sign up for the newsletter, and you will be registered to win four free tickets. Good times. Yep, worth doing. It's a great place to go. Uh, okay. Real quick, weather. Uh, this is Memorial Day weekend, as you know. So uh, the pool's open tomorrow. And uh, for our neighborhood pool, the last two years in a row, Griffin has been the first person in the pool to start the summer. Yep. Uh, he's trying to keep that streak alive. So, Sarah, yeah. you might have to take him Friday morning uh, right after soccer practice to get him in that in that pool first. Yeah. Last year, do you, do you remember what happened last year? He and I, it was a weeknight. So it may have been, it may have been tonight last year. But he said, uh, he said, Dad, can, I, can we go to the pool? And I said, well, yeah, let's go. So we went up to the pool, the key worked, got into the pool. And uh, so I'm, it's too cold for me. So I was sitting on the side and he's in there swimming and a guy, guy from the neighborhood walks over and goes, Hey, what are you guys doing? I said, well, uh, he's swimming. He said, how'd you get in? I said, well, our key just opened the door like it always does. And he said, Oh, it's not supposed to be working yet. They're shocking the pool water right now. <laughs> and he probably shouldn't be in there. <laughs> Oh no! So I, said, I said, "Griff, hop on out. Let's go get a shower." And uh, yeah, he only had uh, he only had pretty severe burns for a couple of months, but it was <laughs> fine. It was fine. Oh man! Oh, that uh, during COVID, I swam quite a bit, honestly, during COVID, and you could smell the chlorine so much thicker than normal. And I was like, this cannot be, this is not good. This cannot be good. This is, this in fact is like probably doing like internal damage to my lungs right now. Um, and so I wonder if it's like gone back to their other normal levels of chlorine, because I did find out in fact that some of them did add more chlorine. <sighs> We're a family of swimmers. So the, uh, the swim meet, I was just thinking about that. The swim meet I was at for the girls in, in, uh, Tulsa, the Tulsa area over the weekend, 
They didn't have the chlorine smell, and I didn't realize until the girls told me it was a saltwater pool. I love saltwater pools. Yeah. 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 Those I'm are the fan. popular thing now. Yeah. Well, yeah, but I mean, sometimes in a public pool, you're like, yeah, you should probably use chlorine. <laughs> <laughs> well, this is a, this is a, uh, you know, it's a lap pool. pool. So yeah. it's, it's, it's swimmers who, who are probably taking care of the water, I would right. think. I, I would hope. I would hope so. Yeah. 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 Um, okay. Well, happy Thursday, everybody. Have yeah. a good one. Thanks for watching. We'll see you on Friday. Bye.